dusty summers and uh, dry times. So drought has been seared into me from a very young age. G'day and welcome to this week's segment of Farm Yarns where we dive behind the audio to find out who inspires our guests, what motivates them, what they would like to debunk and also what resources they lean on to get the most out of their agri business. So let's get down to it, Farm Yarns. Well, Bruce, we had you on earlier on in the week talking everything about your way of farming, and now we're getting to know a little bit about Bruce and who he is, who he is, where you've learnt from your resources, and maybe who even inspires you. So, welcome to Farm Yarns. Thank you very much, Jack. So, let's kick it off. What's your morning routine? What's it look like for you? Uh, checking a lot of emails uh, now nowadays, and um, uh, I have a very varied life now. Fortunately, travelling over Australia and sometimes internationally going and uh, doing visitation and advisory work, but also research and development. So I often go out and spend a lot of time out in pastoral areas, which is great fun. Beautiful. So just quickly, what sort of differences have you seen from Australian farming systems to overseas, wherever you've been, maybe the States? Yes, I've been to the States and and Europe a a bit. Uh, Yes, the the variance is, is wide, but then so is the variance within uh, each nation as as well and uh, that is probably a, a lesson for any outsiders uh, listening uh, farmers aren't just a monolithic group anywhere you know they reflect the good the bad and the indifferent uh, as every other part of society uh, does uh, but um, uh, it's often a really really heartfelt uh, commitment and also a desire and reward for producing things yeah. that if you like is a big driver that seems to be a common thing um, more than even uh, profit driven motives certainly and it's always great to see outside our own farm gate but for yourself in 60 seconds what's your first memory on farm it may be your own farm or someone else in the family yes uh of long hot uh dusty summers and uh dry times so drought has been seared into me from very young age Absolutely, and we're going through a couple of wet patches currently at the moment. We won't say no to rain, but we just need a few more sunny days at the moment. So through through your journey and experiences, who's been the most influential people within your life, both professionally or personally? doesn't matter. Yes, um, uh, I would suggest that uh, professionally, uh, uh, Fred uh, Provenza uh, from Utah State University uh, has, and his team, uh, that he had together there, been very influential. Um, otherwise, um, uh, my community here at Narromine, I was very fortunate uh, to grow up mostly during the 1970s and um, and not only um, uh, have just our regular com- community, but a wide cross-section of, of people. And uh, and it was very a very egalitarian in, uh, uh, time. And I really appreciate that it was the, the fact. Amazing. Great to have your community around you as well and having people to lean on within that community even better. But for yourself, I'd imagine this question would get thrown to you a lot. What's a myth you'd like to debunk about your area of farming? Uh, yes, that, that it's a, uh, but it's an antipathy to everything else that, that people have done. Sometimes people feel that uh, 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 quite understandably, that it's uh, that it's a challenge to everything that they've ever ever achieved, or or the way they wish to uh, to practice. I don't come at things that way personally. Uh, I think we can um, we can all progress together. There's always really good and interesting things, uh, and um, we should try and collect as many useful toolboxes as we possibly can and useful tools, and uh, have them all in the tool shed. Absolutely, I think your approach to it is amazing as well. Um, but for yourself, how do you look at risk in life and work? What does risk mean to you? Um, mostly about trying to uh, set up systems that minimise that as much as possible. Uh, and that's my strategy for uh, coping uh, with with risk prevention, an ounce of prevention being worth a pound of, of cure, as the old statement goes. Yeah. So uh, if, if we don't design... If, uh, systems that that head that way then of course inherently you're you're increasing your risk 
Beautiful. And if you could be remembered for one thing, what would that be? Oh, <laughs> um, oh gosh. Uh, uh, tried hard, could have done better. <laughs> but plenty more things to do, you think? Indeed, indeed. Now, I think you've already left your legacy. Um, you're leaving your legacy now, and it's amazing what the work, the impact that you've done, obviously winning the Bob Hawke Award winner um, of Landcare. So... Let's go back to it. If you were 18 years old, having known what you know now, what sort of advice or information would you tell 18-year-old Bruce? Um, okay. Uh, simplify the business and complicate the biodiversity. Beautiful. I don't think we'll get that answer again for quite a while. So let's see who the next person is to recommend that. But <laughs> for yourself, whatever it may be, if you got a million dollars right now, what would you spend it on or invest it in? Uh, in community uh, uh, activities that assist uh, uh, the wider community to get back in touch with animals and nature. That's, that's a good one. Being so close to town, I think it would be a good one for others that don't have access to the farms, um, to that ability to have access to it, rather than instead of around the circular areas of what Byron Bay may be, it's a, sort of more a petting zoo and a cafe. Um, further afield, I think that would be great to get in and see that salt bush as well that you've got on farm as well. Indeed, yes. Being in amongst things, there's no uh, uh, substitute for uh, experience. We can go and watch travel shows, but it's never the same as going somewhere. One hundred percent. And for yourself, what's your deepest fear? Uh, that we we don't uh, change our basic directions. Uh, with the challenges facing us and that we uh, continue to uh, um, uh, do short-term things rather than think long-term. Great stuff and vision. But a tongue twister to finish it off with, if you weren't doing what you're doing, what would you be doing? Uh, I think I'd be um, a scientist of, uh, of some uh, description. Beautiful. And... For yourself, your favourite resource that you've leaned on throughout the years of farming and improving your farm, what are, what have they been and what sort of medium? Oh, wow. Uh, a lot of, um, uh, in later years, plant identification books, believe it or not, yep. uh, to, to get to know better my own, uh, uh, own situation here locally. Um, yes, otherwise, uh, uh, grazing management change was a, a large one for us personally. Yep, good stuff. Have you actually heard of that the phone app that can ID a plant? You take a photo and it IDs it? Right, yes, yes, uh, that's right. There are several uh, different um, uh, versions of that and getting better rapidly all the time. And that's where some of the really exciting stuff, uh, from my view, uh, comes is uh, uh, artificial intelligence doing things at a faster rate than any a brilliant person could even uh, attempt. There's some exciting things there. It's amazing. I actually signed up to the trial and I forgot. So I ended up paying for the apps. Now I've got it for 12 months. I've been going, like if I'm mustering our sheep, I'd go around and like just see something that I didn't know what it was, just take a picture of it. And like now it just banks it up. So I've put in what's in each paddock and there's a couple that's not in each paddock. So mm -hmm. it's been to see what's going on. Indeed, yes. It's a, it's a, a fascinating and never-ending journey, uh, that of uh, interest. And uh, but one thing, the animals know what they all are. They might not have names for them. Absolutely. But before, in the previous episode, you gave us a bit of an insight into your books that you'd like to pass on. But what's been your most favourite book um, in life learning sort of thing? Right. Oh, gosh. I, I would probably um, uh, uh, suggest this in, in my uh, presently. I, I believe Fred does a wonderful uh, job of making the, the full linkages between plants, animals, and us, our whole dietary and behavioural um, uh, habits and, and effects and how that uh, affects us individually, but also more broadly. And he does it in uh, such a beautifully communicated fashion. Great stuff. Well, Bruce, thank you very much for joining us on Farm Yarns and getting to know you a little bit more. I'm sure the listeners will be able to benefit from what resources you've leaned on to who inspires you and what you do and what you get up to. 
Thank you very much, uh, Jack. And uh, don't forget that yourself and others doing all sorts of exciting and interesting things inspire me in the here and now as well. You can't actually see what I'm wearing for every conversation, but be sure I'm wearing a Farms of Ice Green, as I like to call it, kindly supplied by Stockman & Co. By the farmers for the land. Jason and the team over there do a stellar job, so check them out at stockmanandco.com. Get some quality work shirts, footy shorts, hats and more for this summer. Make sure you use the discount code that they supply just for Farms of Ice listeners. Farms of Ice, 10. Make sure you get into it. Thank you for tuning in to the Farms Advice podcast. It is produced by Advert Your Eyes Digital, the agribusiness marketing specialist. Go to farmsadvice.com.au for more information on this episode and the others before and spread the Farms Advice. If you love this episode, please give us a review on Apple Podcasts and subscribe as it helps other farmers find us too. But until then, next Tuesday, keep on farming. In the spirit of reconciliation, the Farms of Ice podcast acknowledges the traditional custodians of country for Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today.